Is your clack water softener showing an error code? Is it something you can fix yourself or do you have to call a service technician? Do the different error codes apply to tannin filters, iron filters, and other filters in addition to water softeners? How do you reset it to get rid of the error code? I'm going to explain to you what's causing those error codes and how to fix them starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So this video is for you if you're a do-it-yourselfer, a plumber, a homeowner, a water filtration specialist, you're being confronted by error codes and you want to figure out what to do about it. Fortunately, these Clack WS1 valve water softeners have diagnostics built in that will give different error codes for different problems within the water softener valve. So if you know how to interpret those codes, you can repair this water softener just like a pro. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's a water softener, an iron filter, or a tannin filter, the codes and the remedies are all the same. Now, I definitely suggest before we go any further that you know how a water softener actually works. If you don't, check out my video. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now, the error codes and the remedies I'm going to be discussing here today apply specifically to the Clack WS1 valve. So there's a number of companies that use this same valve. We use it for our Hume water filtration products, but also companies like Water Depot, uh, Viqua, Nelson, they all use the same valve. Now, the faceplate, the front of it may look different, but how you can tell if you have a Clack valve or not is by looking at the top of the valve. So you can see these uh, bypasses, they're often a good tell. You can see that they're red, but they're also pointy on one end and flared out on the other end like an arrow. And that's one way to tell if it's a clack valve. Another obvious place is this uh, injector housing. It's If it's on the top like this with a cap on the top, that tells you again that it's a clack valve. And what we're talking about here today applies. So when you get an error code with a clack valve, the first thing you need to do is make note of what the error code is. This one's a 101, and also clear that error code. It may just be a glitch in the system, a one-off uh, kind of thing that caused the error code, and, uh, and you may be fine just clearing the error code. So to do that, you remove the faceplate, take off the tabs on both sides, and then have a look here. So to clear the error code, you unplug it here. That's the, where the power connection is. You unplug it, and you need to leave it unplugged. It's, say, at least five seconds. I like to give it 30 seconds just to be on the safe side. So the reason this one was an error was because I had unplugged the motor for a bit of drama, right? And uh, so once you've, uh, in this case, fixed the concern or just want to reset the valve, then you just plug this back in. And then it's going to go through its startup uh, procedure. And you can see it's gone back to the time. And uh, so it's cleared the error code. All right, so we'll go through each of the error codes one by one, and uh, I'll share the concern and the potential remedy. And I'm gonna share my notes with you, make it a little bit easier uh, for both of us. And uh, so error code 1001, or it could be E1 or 101. So that was the error code that I had on here earlier. It's unable to recognize start of regeneration. So there's an optical eye it's behind the circuit board, it's actually built into here. And uh, what that optical eye does, it, uh, there's a couple of discs in there and it senses where the valve is. And uh, so what's happened here, it, was, uh, it couldn't sense where the valve was, so it put it into this error code. And uh, it will try for a short time and then, like I say, it'll just give you an error. So the remedy is most likely something is blocking the reflective tape that's behind there. And uh, so you can uh, remove the circuit board, take out the little discs there, and just make sure that everything's clean and then just reassemble it. That's pretty straightforward. Um, it could be that the motor isn't working or just needs to be seated properly. So this is the motor here, and is, as you can tell, it, it was unplugged, so the, the, the circuit board thought that, hey, that motor's not working. So, so one thing you need to check is the motor here. It has a little spring clip here, and if you pull that spring clip, you can pull the motor out. And uh, so, like I say, sometimes it isn't seated properly, like so, and it will give you that same error code. So you just need to turn it a little bit and just make sure that's all the way in. All right, and uh, make sure the board is snapped into place. So again, it's very important the board needs to snap in. And uh, on other videos that I've done in the past, and I'll put a link in the description down below, it talks about disassembling the valve. And uh, you have to be careful that there's a couple little uh, studs down at the bottom here and in the middle, sorry, and at the sides at the top and a tab in the middle, you need to make sure that that board is snapped all the way in. If it's not snapped all the way in, again, you get that same uh, error code. Or it's a defective circuit board as uh, the optical sensor is part of the board and, uh, and you can also get that. 
So the next one is error code 1002 or E2 or 102. So there's an unexpected stall. So what's happened is the, the valve is trying to go to the next cycle, but it can't go. So something is binding that valve. Something is holding it up from going to that next cycle. So the most common thing is something is actually stuck within the valve. So inside the valve, you've got this uh, seal pack and you've got a piston. This is the, the main piston and this is the brine piston that slides inside here. So the tolerances are very tight and you can see this is kind of a basket design. So if you have a lot of iron in your water and it can build up in that basket and it can start to bind that piston. And uh, so that's, that's what's causing the binding in this. So what you need to do is you need to open up the valve, disassemble it and at least clean it out. Well, once you've cleaned it out and reassembled it, it might be okay. Um, by the way, I have a great YouTube video that I'll put a link in the description down below that shows you how to do that disassembly. Um, it might be okay. If it's not okay, then you actually need to replace the piston and the seal pack. So once you've done the work to clean out the valve or you've replaced the uh, pistons and the seal pack, you need to resync the valve. Actually, after pretty much every troubleshooting procedure that you've done on the valve, you need to resync it. And to do that, it's simple. Again, you just unplug this. Now you just need to wait about five seconds or so to resync it and then you can plug it back in like so and then you can hear it uh, resyncing. So something else that could be causing the 1002, if you check the notes here again, is the main drive gear could be too tight. And that typically happens when you've done some service on this, you've done some work on it, and then when you're closing it up, you've just tightened it too much, and that may also cause that binding within there. Um, also, improper voltage could cause the same problem. So again, make sure you check that, uh, that you've got the correct uh, voltage going on, or there isn't something going on with the hydro in your home cottage or cabin. And this is my YouTube video that shows you how to disassemble the Clack WS1 valve. Again, I'll put a link in the description down below. So next, moving on to error code 1003. Again, it could be E3 or it could be ERR103. So the motor ran too long. It timed out trying to reach the next cycle. So what could be causing that? Could be a motor failure, so you'd replace the motor. And you saw how easy it is to replace the motor on these. To be honest, it's very seldom that we have a motor failure. I've been working with this valve for... Um, since 2003 and uh, I think I've only ever replaced one motor so it's pretty rare that that ever happens but it could happen and this would be the error code that you'd get. Uh, built up sand or iron in the piston we talked about that a little bit earlier with the error code 1002 and again you would re replace the pistons and seal pack with that uh, video that I just mentioned uh, earlier and the drive bracket not slap snap properly in place. This is the drive bracket here. So again, when you're uh, disassembling it, or sorry, when you're reassembling it after disassembly, just be careful how you wrote these wires to make sure they don't interfere, that they're pressed all the way back into the housing so that with this drive bracket will snap into place. If it doesn't snap into place, it will cause that grief. And once again, once you've done that work in the valve, make sure you resync it. You can get replacement parts for your Clack WS1 water softener at our websites, watereastore.com in the US, watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. I'll put a link in the description down below. So next we go to error code 1004. Again, it could be showing E4. So what that's telling is a control valve motor ran too long. Drive bracket not snapped in properly. Snap it in and resync. Again, very similar to 1003. Each error code gives you a little bit more information, but uh, again, motor might have ran too long, unable to find home position. Again, snap that, uh, make sure that everything is assembled correctly, and then be sure to resync the valve. So then we get to error code 1006 or E6 or 106. And what this one's telling us is that it's valve not recognizing the MAV. So the MAV is for multiple valves uh, system where they're connected together. So what's happened is that someone's made a mistake in the programming and, uh, and in that programming, they have identified that this is uh, set up to be, this valve is to work with a MAV and, uh, and that's not the case. So because a MAV isn't connected, it's going to look for that MAV the controller that controls the different valves that it thinks are connected together and it giving you this error code. 
So, um, so again, you need to check my programming video. Again, I'll put a link in the description down below. When you're doing the programming, instead of it being set for 1.0, someone set it up as 1.0T or something like that, T being for twin. And that's why it's looking for that. We had a, a situation uh, not that long ago where a customer received a tannin filter and someone had made that mistake in the programming right from the factory. So once we got that error code, um, we just went through the programming, changed the programming, and everything was fine. So as you can also see in the notes, it could be built up foreign matter on the piston creating some friction or drag to time out the motor. So again, you would replace the piston, the seal pack, resync the valve, and you're good to go. And here's my YouTube video that shows you how to check the programming. I'll put a link in the description down below. And then we get to error code 1007, could be E7, could be 107. So what this is telling us here is there's foreign matter lodged in the MAV causing mechanical binding. So again, if you don't have a MAV, if you don't have multiple valves, something isn't right in the programming and needs to go back to that uh, video of mine I suggested earlier. So again, the remedy, if you do have a MAV, is you need to open up the MAV, clean it out, find out what's causing that, put it back together, resync it, and you're good to go. Click here for your next video on water softeners and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.